So I finally got my fence installed, but it wasn't cheap. Hi everybody, my name is Desiree. I live and work in Atlanta, but I have a tiny house in the Appalachian Mountains where I'm slowly starting an off-grid farm. I'm a single girl doing most of the work on my own and learning as I go. So come along with me on my journey and I hope it will entertain and maybe also give someone out there a little inspiration. Welcome to Honeysuckle Homestead Retreat. Welcome back to Honeysuckle Homestead Retreat. I figured the last few videos that I did were kind of a downer uh, with the break-in and the robbery and everything. And so for this week, I wanted the video to be a little bit more positive, I guess you would say. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I've been wanting to get a fence installed for my horse. And I finally did it. I finally got the fence installed. In reality, this was actually done a few months ago, um, but I am just now getting the video out. <laughs> I would have had this video out a little bit sooner uh, if it hadn't been for that break-in that happened. So I wanted to get those videos out right away, and here we are. Now I am finally showing you guys the fence. So here is my fence. I chose to go with the woven wire, or also known as the no-climb horse fence because it will help keep other animals out, predators, um, neighbors, dogs, whatever. It will help keep them out of the pasture. And it's also a lot safer for the horses as well. Anything like barbed wire, uh, they could get tangled in and they could get cut up. Uh, horses are prone to injury. So you have to make sure that you're keeping them as safe as possible. In a smaller pasture like this where they could easily get tangled up in the fence line, it's better to have a fence such as this, or maybe an all wood fence or something like that. Barbed wire fencing really isn't preferred for horses, but in a situation where you have a lot of acreage, like a hundred acres, a barbed wire fence isn't that big of a deal because they're less likely to have problems running into the fence. Whereas in a smaller pasture like this, which is only about an acre and a half, they're gonna be coming in contact with that fence a lot more. Now, I did actually choose to have some barbed wire, or at least a portion of this fence to be barbed wire, but the reason for that was because of the landscaping. It would have been very difficult to stretch that woven wire in this area right here that I'm showing you right now, uh, which is the area that goes over the creek, uh, but it's also really close to the road as well. So. I chose to go with barbed wire here just to make it easier and better to put this fence line here. As for the cost of the fence, if I had not gone with the woven wire, it would have been a cheaper fence. Like if I had gone with some kind of high tensile fence or the barbed wire fence, for example, the barbed wire is probably the cheapest fence that you could possibly get. But because I went with woven wire and because I chose to go with wood posts along the road and along most of my driveway, the cost went up. I also have five gates in this tiny pasture. I have two pedestrian gates and no, shoot, I have six. I have six gates. I also have six gates in this tiny pasture. I have three pedestrian gates and I have three uh, like tractor larger gates uh, so that a tractor can go through or a car or a truck or whatever. I really felt like I needed all those gates, but because of that, that also upped the price a bit, uh, probably added about a thousand dollars just in gates alone. Uh, maybe even a little bit more than that. Gates are not cheap. Another thing that added to the cost of my particular fence was all the corners that I had. I had a few more turns and corners than I would have liked. <laughs> But because of that, you have to put an extra bracing with the wood post. So there has to be like, there has to be a lot of bracing. So it ends up being a lot more wood posts than you would normally use. I ended up with about 1,200 feet of fence line. And it's about an acre and a half total that has been fenced in. The grand total of this whole fence, material, cost of materials, the labor, everything, came to a nice whopping $10,000. Yeah, it wasn't cheap. Could I have done it myself? Absolutely. I definitely could have done this myself. I have no idea how long it would have taken me. Plus, 
I didn't want to take time off of work in order to do this. I would have lost money by taking time off of work. So I would have lost money. I would have had to pay for the materials anyway. And I would have to put in my own manual labor putting this fence in. Now, if I lived there full time, I would have been more inclined to do it myself. But because I don't live there full time and because I would have to take off probably a decent amount of work in order to get this done, I chose to hire someone to do it. They had the equipment to do it. They had a way to just pound those posts into the ground like that. And they were able to do this in like, I think two weekends, like really quick. It would have taken me way longer than that to dig all those post holes by hand. <laughs> so I definitely chose not to do this myself. And I'm really glad I did. Uh, I'm really happy with the work that was done and it's a nice solid fence. So I have no regrets on that. And it's gonna be really great at keeping predators out. It's gonna be great at keeping my horse in and also keeping my horse safe. So yes, I am happy with the fence, even at $10,000. <laughs> and now that I have a fence up, it looks like I probably won't be getting the visitors that I had been getting before. Uh, sometime during the summer, I had two bulls decide to come over and visit me from my neighbors across the street. They literally jumped the fence, crossed the road, and came over to my fresh cut pasture that they just could not resist. I was really surprised to see them. I, I had no idea that there were two bulls or cows in my pasture. My little dog started barking at something that he saw down by the creek from the window inside the tiny house. So I go outside and I'm looking, and to my surprise, there are two bulls there and they seemed just as surprised to see me. As soon as they saw me, they decided that they were gonna take off and they started heading back to home, their home, which was just across the street. But they weren't really sure who I was and I just really wanted them to go home. So I did keep my distance. I know it looks like I'm a lot closer than I actually am, but I zoomed in with the camera so that you, know, you guys could see them a little bit better. But yeah, that was a surprise to me. I'm like, oh, I've got cows now. That's great. <laughs> but yeah, they did go back over across the street. Um, one of them did slip, ugh, which uh, looked a little bit painful. But he still had no problem hopping over that fence again and going back into his pasture. They have a really poor fence line. And uh, it's unfortunate because it is right by a, a somewhat busy road, at least for the country. It's kind of a busy highway and those cows could have gotten hit by a car. I'm glad that they made it all the way back over and that everybody is safe. Aside from the cows, I did have a pot belly pig come visit me not too long ago. And it turned out that it was a neighbor's pot belly pig. Pretty cute actually, and also pretty friendly, but it liked coming down to the creek to get in the water and wallow around and everything. And uh, I was surprised to see him as well. <laughs> He was pretty friendly, so I was able to go over and pet him and everything. And I did call up some neighbors to see if they knew whose piggy was. They did know, uh, but they said not to worry about it, that he was just kind of making his rounds and that he would make his way back home. After he enjoyed his spa day at the creek and a few pets from me, he walked on home. The cattle and the potbelly pig and any of the neighbor's dogs that used to come over won't be coming over anymore because now I have the fence up. So it will keep them from coming over to my property now, at least that part of my property. There are, there are other ways that you can come in that don't involve the fence, but at least that part of the property, which is by the road and where most of them seem to be coming from, they won't be coming through there anymore. And while we're on the subjects of animals, there are some other wildlife residents that I have come across on the property since I've been there. And one day I was looking out my window and I looked down at the decking that I put that goes leads down to the creek. And I saw these cute, adorable little fur things. And I looked closer and it turns out that they were three baby groundhogs, just as cute as could be. And they didn't seem to be that scared of me. Now granted, I didn't get that close, but I was on the very edge of my deck. So I wasn't super far away from them either but they didn't seem to be too bothered by me. And a little later, the mama came around and she gathered up the babies and they all followed her back into the little cave that is 
down by the creek. So I guess that's their little home, but they looked really cute in it. I've definitely had other wildlife on the property that I have seen. I've seen some foxes, I've seen coyotes. Uh, I've definitely seen like birds of prey, like hawks and eagles and stuff like that. I've seen turkey, I've seen deer and snakes. I've definitely seen snakes, but thankfully I've only seen the good snakes, the black rat snakes, which are actually snakes that you want around your house. They take care of all the mice, all the rats, but they also take care of any other bad snakes that you don't want around, believe it or not. So they're really good snakes to have around and they're not, they're not venomous at all. They're very safe. Uh, they do get to be a large size though. So keep that in mind. They can be up to like, I think seven or eight feet long. So as you can see, I have had lots of visitors on the tiny home homestead from farm animals to wildlife. A lot of the farm animals probably won't be coming around anymore now that I have the fence up, but the wildlife, well, the wildlife's here to stay. So I imagine I'm gonna run across a lot more wildlife. I've heard that bobcats have been seen in the area. I have yet to see a bobcat though. I'm curious, have you guys had any animal visitors yourself wherever you live, whether it be in the city or out in the country? Uh, I've heard of definitely like wildlife coming around, especially like in California, they get a lot of coyotes and stuff. But let me know in the comments below. I'm kind of curious what kind of unexpected visitors you guys have had as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to see more of my videos, click here or here and you can definitely see more of my videos. I think you probably want to watch this one though. This is probably the best one for you. And uh, that's, that's it for this week's episode and I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much.